UFC Connected is back with another stacked episode. Here's what's coming up. We track the evolution of British fan favorite, Dangerous David Grant. This is everything I ever wanted. I just want to be known as someone who just comes to scrap. It's what I want to be remembered as, and that's what I'll continue doing for as long as I can. Irish prospect Ian Machado Gary shares his top Conor McGregor moments. The way he visualized the fight and the way he spoke about it, and it happened exactly like that. Never really been done in a way that he did it, and it has to be on my list. And a UFC champion is honored by a college wrestling Hall of Fame. Ever since I was little, I always wanted to feel what it would be like to be at the top of a sport. And here we are today. After nearly a decade on the UFC roster, British bantamweight Davy Grant says his best is still to come. Despite a series of injuries, the tough 18 finalist never wavered in his commitment to the sport, continuing to evolve despite adversity. Dangerous Davy has now emerged as one of the most entertaining athletes in the entire division. Join us in Durham, England to find out more in this edition of Fighter Focus. Dangerous Davy Grant. Gotta love the nickname. Fitting for this 36-year-old out of County Durham, England. A guy who's been in the game for a long time. Oh! Wow! Dangerous Davy Grant walking him off tonight! I think people definitely forget how long I've been actively fighting for. I'm definitely time served. The best is coming towards the end of my career. I still feel like I'm getting better and better. Davy Grant, you know why he gets bonuses, because he throws it all on the line. The guy is a tremendous striker, he's tough, he's durable, and he is not looking to take it on. I've had my arm snapped, I've had my jaw broke. He honestly, God, I'm gonna still keep coming at you no matter what. Oh, oh, no, and he puts him out! Wow. Dangerous! Davey! I love the fact that I've dedicated my whole life to being hard as f I mean, that's all I do every day. I just try to get harder. I'm a father. That's my first job. You all right? Training. Yeah, good lad. Jay and Nate both train in the gym. Heidi, like, she's only four, so she's only just started getting into training. That's it, Heidi. Go on, keep going. Go on, you can do it. Good girl. I absolutely love being a father. Everything I always do will always be for them. I'll always just try and make their lives better with their whatever I do in my life. Yeah, it would be just brilliant to be able to one day to have my kids grow up and say, oh yeah, my dad was the winner of the Ultimate Fighter and he fought in the UFC. And just to have my kids being able to say that would be just mean the world to his life. Ready, ready, do it. Even just to try out in the Ultimate Fighter was absolutely fantastic. I remember being so, so buzzing. Dana White, I remember him clapping, saying bravo after my fight. Bravo, David. And then to get on Ronda Rousey's team, training with her and all her coaches for six weeks, just living the lifestyle. It was an absolute dream come true. Davy Grant, he has survived the gauntlet. He is one of the last two men standing. Not the position Grant wanted to be in here. He's got it very deep and Grant taps. The finale got beat fair and square. I was absolutely devastated. Dana came in to see me after the fight and he was like, look, don't worry about it. You did fantastic. You still to hit your prime, you know, like you're going to get a contract no matter what. And that was like just absolute music to my ears. <laughs> when I got signed from the Ultima Fighter, I had a fight a few months later in London. And the week of the fight, I blew my knee out. Obviously, after the Ultima Fighter, you want to keep that momentum going. Two, three months after the surgery, I managed to get myself back in the gym and then freak accident in training and snapped all the ligaments in my ankle. I'd only been back in training again another four weeks and I got another injury that was even worse than the two before. It was like a neck injury. But I think it was like two and a half years. That was sort of forgot about in the MMA world. And after two and a half years, fought Tito Vera. Dangerous Davy Grom. 
he finally gets to perform in front of his home crowd. Big flurry here from Davy Grant. Knees and elbows. Dangerous! Davy Grant! It was like, right, it's finally time to get going. Davy Grant, a man who's dealt with a lot of adversity in his career, now trying to get back into a rhythm with his training and fighting more frequently. Lands a beautiful right hand there. Now he's switching stances. Oh, big knee landed too. Oh, beautiful combination there from Graham. I thought he was done, to be honest. I was drowning and pounding him, and I was thinking, ah, I was going to stop him in a second, and he was still in the game, and he threw up a great arm back. This Looking is tight. Finish. He got him. He tapped. Hit all over. He snapped my arm. Oh, that's not the way it's supposed to bend, folks. I was out for another year. He didn't want to give up. I know Davey and I've known him for a long time. There's no quit in him at all. The main worry was that I was never going to be able to show my true potential. And I really did not want that to be it. He has got to be one of the most unlucky fighters. Just his fourth appearance now in six years. The pop-up fight, it was a make or break. If I'd have lost that fight, I would have been released. I know I would have done. I, I really went safe that fight because I just needed the win. Dangerous! Dateline Abu Dhabi. The way for live action from UFC Fight Island officially ends here. Fight Island was a massive thing. It was the only live sports going on in all the world. Uh, pardon my French, but I think the Monday fight, he just didn't give a He wanted to fight his fight regardless of the opponent. The whole world's gonna be watching now. This is the chance to show people what I'm about. And win or lose, I was going out there to war. Oh! 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 Huge knockdown for Martin Day! I got my jaw broke in the first couple of minutes of the fight. Right on the button as Davey was coming in, a little too aggressive. And I was like, oh, well, I'm still here. So I'm still going to go out there. I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. I've got nothing to lose. I'm just going to go out there and try and bang them out. Whoa, oh, again. Oh, that will work. Dangerous oh, Davey Grant walking him out tonight. He is out cold. It was the first time I'd knocked anyone clean out with one punch before. Give me a bit of confidence in my own chin. Like, I got my jaw broke and still went and fought on. I was still taking punches on a broken jaw and just knocking this kid out. This is Davy Grant. This is how Davy Grant wants to fight. Davy Grant, the father of three, coming home with the biggest highlight of his UFC career. <laughs> when I get back to my kids, it's usually been like a few weeks, and it's super emotional. The kids definitely feel it, and they know exactly what it is. They know how much it all means to me. Daddy. Daddy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's always nice to get back and see the kids. <laughs> oh, no. The last goodbye is always very emotional for me. I don't let the kids see. I feel like an old day guy going off to war. Whether I'm cut to bits, broken jaws, won or lost, it makes no difference. And I get home to the kids, and it's just because that's why I do it. Shall you get me? Okay, then. Davey Grant 2.0 is making his way back to the octagon. Great to see from one of the fight game's good guys. Davey Grant is a, he's a happy savage. There's always a smile on his face. He loves fighting, whether that's beating somebody up or getting beaten up himself. Oh! Powerful left from Martinez. Good shot. Yeah, of course it was. You're going to hit more on this round. Back from work. <laughs> <laughs> oh! No! Down 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 down. Oh my no. The dangerous Davy Grant does it again! There's not a lot of things I could have done in my life that I would enjoy as much as fighting. I love the fact that I can fight a lot more consistently now. Oh, there it is! Right on the money, dog! Defense of Lewis! Defense of Lewis! Oh, wow! And he puts him out! He's aware of all the injuries he's had. He's aware of his age, that he, he knows he's not going to be able to do this forever. 
So he's literally putting it all on the line and every fight is like his last fight. This is everything I ever wanted. I just want to be known as someone who just comes to scrap. That's what I want to be remembered as and that's what I'll continue doing for as long as I can. What the f like that was, wasn't it? Get in. Very impressive. The notorious Conor McGregor impacted the sport like none other as he rose to superstar status as double champion. The Irishman created some of the most memorable moments in MMA history, inspiring the next generation of fighters from his home country, including rising star Ian Machado Gary. We asked the undefeated welterweight to take five and list his favorite McGregor moments. There's no one that's had a bigger impact in the sport other than Conor McGregor. Undeniably the biggest star the UFC has ever had. His impact has been unrivaled. People are freaking out all over the world because this guy's fighting. He has done more for the sport than any individual. He has excelled MMA in a way that probably will never be replicated again. Charismatic and enigmatic. He is someone who does not give a f <laughs> The way he markets himself, the way he carried his brand, the confidence in which he walked around with and spoke with. No chance, that's what you got. He thrives off big moments and the opportunity to go out there and put on a show. And he had the skill to go out there and win the titles. Big shots by McGregor. But he also had the charisma and the confidence to entertain an entire planet. I love each and every one of you. This is the future Ian Gary here, and these are my top five Conor McGregor moments. Coming in at number five, UFC 178. The fact that this man said what he was going to do and went out and did it, it's a testament to his confidence. I'm going to crack him with a jab and, I, and he's going to wobble and I'm going to put him away early. It's going to be a first round KO, mark my words. The way that he spoke about putting stuff out there in the world for it to be seen so that it can happen. The absolute confidence is compelling. And he wasn't afraid to tell the world how he was going to do it and go out there and prove that he was right. Poye and McGregor. Oh, he heard him. Looking to finish the fight. It is all over. The man talked to talk and walked to walk. Mystic Mac. The way he visualized the fight and the way he spoke about it and it happened exactly like that. Never really been done in a way that he did it and it has to be on my list. Coming in at number four is any time Conor McGregor opens his mouth. The king speaks however he wants. I'm a pimp, Rocky Guilty Mick. The fact that he can change people's feelings and emotions when he opens his mouth after he wins. Oh, surprise, surprise, the king is back and can just get you pumped full of adrenaline and hype you up so much by just literally muttering some words out of his mouth. We're not here just to take part, we're here to take over. When he opened his mouth and the performance he put on, it wasn't just the fighter, it was the man he was and the way he spoke. It's not all talk here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe out everyone in this division. I said that and I will do it. And then obviously the fact that you're saying that stuff in front of an Irish crowd will... <laughs> It's just going to cause chaos. I did it, baby, you did it! Yeah! You hear about the stories about the traveling Irish, as someone who's involved in his nation, someone who's a fellow countryman, as a fan, as a fight fan, as a kid who was sat down and watching this fighter reach his, his dreams. It's just gold. Coming in at number three, the night that the king claimed his throne. Jose Aldo. Conor McGregor, Las Vegas, Nevada. He sent himself in the history books and claimed that first UFC title. McGregor! He goes out there and he sleeps, who many regarded as the most dominant fighter that we'd seen in the sport. The number one pound for pound king. Conor won that fight even before the fight had begun. The way you could kind of see Aldo not really being himself and he kept his head down the entire time until he looked up. And when he looked up across the cage, he's seen Conor McGregor smiling, ready and raring to go. Here we go! And Conor McGregor goes out there and takes the throne. Oh! The first punch he threw slept him. 
it put his name in the history books forever. One of the greatest of all time. He was already a superstar, but now he is a superstar with the world title. And that, for me, has to be number three. Coming in at number two is UFC 205 press conference when Jeremy Steven took a stab at the king, and he will remember that for the rest of his life. Conor McGregor isn't just known for his unbelievable fights, but he's also known for his amazing viral one-liners. There's two things I really like to do, and that's whoop ass and look good. That was why people tuned in. I mean, there was more people at press conferences because he was there, and you know you're gonna get those one-liners. Conor McGregor made us rich. Break out the red panties. This is all I call pocket watch. <laughs> Three people died making this watch, you know what I mean? I talk and I talk and I talk, but guess what? I back it up. When Jeremy Stevens made the wrong decision and tried to go at the king, and he said, This guy TKO's people. When I knock people out, they don't move. Connor turned around to Jeremy Stevens and he said, That famous line, Who the is that guy? Who the is that? I can't plan for something like that. He just reacted in the moment in the most real way he possibly could, and that was it. And I absolutely loved it, because if you're from Ireland, you will feel it. It's just a, there's something in us that just has to bite back at something like that. I literally remember everyone, everyone in Ireland being like, who the f is that guy? It was, it was brilliant. So that, for me, would be my number two Conor McGregor moment. Coming in at number one is UFC 205 when Conor McGregor made history and became the first UFC double champ. I remember sitting down at my best mate's house, on the couch, absolutely buzzing, waiting to watch this fight. No fighters in UFC history has ever been champion in two weight divisions at the same time. Conor spoke about it in the lead up to the fight, how he was going to make history, and when that man said something, it's hard to doubt him. McGregor looking to make history. Here we go! The performance he put on that night was clinical. He got tagged, he got tagged, he's hurt! It was the best, in my opinion, the best Conor we've ever seen. Oh, man. And he hurt him again, he hurt him bad. Oh, he's done, he's done, that's it. It is all over! History has been made! You're watching an athlete become a two-way world champion. Everything he had done up to that point was already historical, and that just topped it for him. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. The double champ does what the f he wants. Those were my top five Conor McGregor moments. UFC welterweight champion Kamaru Usman was recently inducted into the NWCA Hall of Fame. Now regarded as one of the best fighters in the world, the former Division II standout was recognized for his success on the wrestling mats at a special event in Florida. We join the champ for an exclusive look at his induction ceremony for Ultimate Access. Here is the undisputed UFC welterweight champion, Kamal Usman, the former 2010 D2 National Wrestling Champion, three-time NCAA All-American, and now one of the greatest mixed martial arts athletes of all time. And still! I'm here in uh, Jacksonville for the NWC Bay. Vision 2 Wrestling Hall of Fame Banquet. I first got into wrestling in high school. I quickly fell in love with the sport because I realized that I got out what I put in. The harder I trained and the more disciplined I was in the sport, the better the result that I got. Over the years, I got better and better to the point where I figured what was next? How could I continue my career? and that was wrestling in college. Well, I uh, first heard about Camaro from uh, one of his high school friends. I recruited him straight out of high school, and I tell you what, he really kind of took off when he stepped foot in our room. All through that tenure and those times, I, I wanted to be the best. 
He was on such a mission to win a national championship, it was like nobody was going to stand in his way. His junior, senior year, won over 40 matches, got to the national finals. He was losing by one. The kid took a shot on him. I'll never forget. He did a little knee flipper, uh, great technique, and took him down at the buzzer to, to win a national championship. And now to go on, to see what he's doing in the UFC, it doesn't surprise me. It really doesn't because he has such drive, such commitment. It's good to see you. I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for being here. I have no idea. Tonight, being inducted into the Division II Hall of Fame not only means a lot to the University of Nebraska at Kearney, but it means a lot for him. Ever since I was little, I always wanted to feel what it would be like to be at the top of the sport. And here we are today, being inducted into the Division II National Wrestling Hall of Fame. I can't even recognize you anymore. You don't recognize huh? me. <laughs> Gotten skinny, now he oh, just yeah. hides out. Yeah. What's up, man? I've always loved coming around events like this because it just get to, you know, relive your time in the sport that has given you so much, that has taught you so much. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, come with me. Thank you guys so much for introducing me to uh, such a wonderful sport. You guys truly demanded excellence from me, which set the tone for the rest of my life. UNK ultimately was responsible for exposing me to not just, you know, high-level wrestling, but also the world of MMA. So today, uh, accepting this honor, I can truly say that uh, I'm officially retiring from the sport of competitive wrestling. <laughs> but uh, August 20th, my opponent, <laughs> Don't think I won't wrestle, because I will. I'm damn sure gonna wrestle. So I wanna thank you guys for having me. It's been an honor, and uh, thank you wrestling for all you've given me. I spent so much of my time being an, an athlete. It's great now to be able to look back, like look what dedicating yourself into your craft wholeheartedly can do. Look at the accolades that you could achieve for that. I'm just excited to uh, you know, see what the next phase of my life is, but it was a damn good run as an athlete, and it still is as a, as a mixed martial arts fighter. That's all for now, but we will see you next time right here on UFC Connected. Thanks for watching.